Hello, thank you for joining uh, the Austin Asian American Film Festival's Prismatic Taiwan uh, virtual screening series for this presentation of The End of the Track. My name is Josh Martin. I'm a programmer with the AAFF. Um, this is the earliest film in our Prismatic Taiwan uh, series, and it is uh, arguably the earliest possible film uh, that kind of some fits the parameters of uh, this series, highlighting uh, queer Taiwanese cinema uh, films with uh, queer themes, queer representation um, over the decades. This film was made in the late 60s, uh, early 70s, uh, when Taiwan was still uh, quite a conservative society and uh, films uh, dealing with this kind of subject matter were uh, simply unheard of. This was a very much uh, out of the mainstream film, really an independent film um, at or near the very beginning of uh, Taiwanese uh, independent cinema. Um, its director, uh, Mo Duanfei, was a, a recent film school graduate at the time this was made. Um, while he was still uh, a film school student, he had appeared in a documentary directed by one of his classmates, a film called The Mountain, which is itself something of a milestone in Taiwanese independent cinema. And um, in that film, he is, uh, you know, talking about what he would like to do uh, after graduation. And he says, uh, you know, very bluntly, very forthrightly, uh, I want to direct. And if I can't make movies, I would uh, prefer to die. And um, Mo's uh, career after uh, graduation really uh, reflected that, um, that drive. He um, wasted very little time before making his first feature film, an independent film called um, I Didn't Dare to Tell You, which was um, ultimately not released uh, for reasons that are not entirely clear, but possibly because of its um, dark uh, depiction of uh, social issues. It's the story of a, uh, a primary school student and the troubles he goes through with his, uh, his family, his teachers, his school, um, the, the sort of thing that would not necessarily have met with the approval of the, the powers that be uh, at that time. Uh, but Mo Fei was um, you know, very unfazed by that setback. He quickly moved on to the production of a second film, uh, which is the film that um, you'll be seeing as part of our series, The End of the Track. Uh, in that film, he uh, took inspiration from an item he'd read in the newspaper about the sudden and unexpected death of an adolescent boy. He took this you know, little incident uh, and then kind of spun an entire fictional narrative around it, imagining a uh, relationship between, this, uh, between an adolescent boy and a, uh, a friend, and um, a friend with whom he uh, has a relationship that is uh, perceived by others in the film as uh, unnaturally or unusually close. Um, their relationship, it should be said, is not um, foregrounded in the way that we might expect it to be in a, a later film, which could depict a, a queer relationship uh, in a more uh, un, uh, direct way. Um, the film doesn't uh, really insist or assert upon the queerness of uh, any of its characters. Um, although I think it is still very noteworthy that the film actually does, in fact, use the word queer in the English subtitles, the subtitles that were made at the time. Um, this is a somewhat loose translation of the, the Chinese word used in the dialogue, Tong uh, Xinan, which is the kind of standard uh, formal term in Chinese for uh, a homosexual. Uh, but um, it's still fascinating that um, really that either of these words uh, were used um, in, the, in the film um, at the time. It's, um, they, they quite likely were never heard before uh, in a Taiwanese film in, uh, by night before 1970. I think uh, the end of the track is probably best understood as a kind of look at what happens when a person is denied the opportunity to define a relationship to kind of explore the boundaries and parameters of that relationship. Um, and um, in this film, that's partially through, uh, you know, the kind of, let's say, the intervention of fate. Um, but um, it's also because this is just a, um, a generally oppressive society that we see in this film, and it's a society where uh, relationships um, outside of the mainstream or really non-heteronormative relationships were uh, would, would were certainly uh, stigmatized, uh, forbidden, um, simply not spoken of and, uh, and not depicted. And this was also very much the case in Taiwanese cinema, as is reflected by the way the film somewhat kind of delicately treads um, when dealing with these themes. Um, unfortunately, these uh, themes would continue to be um, unrepresented in Taiwanese cinema because, um, once again, this film was not released in Taiwan. That was now two films in a row that Mo Wenfei had made that were um, 
unable to uh, be seen by Taiwanese audiences. Uh, once again, it's not exactly clear what happened. It may it may have been um, some financial or commercial reasons behind it. This film was made in black and white at a time when audiences had come to expect color from uh, the movies, including domestic uh, Taiwanese films. Um, it may have also been because the censors objected to the nature of the relationship between the two boys or just the, the generally uh, dark depiction of society uh, seen in this film, something that Mo Dun Fei evidently was uh, beginning to make a specialty of. Um, but whatever the reason, Mo Dun Fei uh, essentially gave up on making films in Taiwan. Um, he spent a couple of years traveling around Europe and South America before he uh, ended up in Hong Kong, where he became a contract director with uh, Shaw Brothers, the largest uh, studio in uh, Hong Kong at that time, uh, really one of the largest in the entire uh, world of Chinese language cinema. Um, he eventually became a specialist in their more dark and disreputable genres, the violent crime films, gory horror pictures, um, softcore exploitation films. The film that he's most remembered for today is one of his, uh, his last movies, uh, a film from 1988 called Men Behind the Sun, which is a very gruesome, very graphic recreation of Japanese war crimes in China, quite a, a far cry from uh, the end of the track, which is, uh, as uh, I think you'll see, a very sensitive, somewhat you know, understated uh, film. Um, the, uh, the end of the track was um, really almost unknown for decades. It was uh, unseen until um, just a couple of years ago when it was brought out of the vaults and preserved and digitized by the Taiwan Film and Audiovisual Institute. Since then, it's uh, been uh, making the rounds of various uh, festivals, um, different uh, you know, museum screenings and so forth. And um, we are uh, very happy to be presenting it for our online viewership uh, here in the United States. Um, unfortunately, Mo Dun Fei did not live long enough to see the revival of this film. He died in June of last year, but um, thanks to the, uh, the efforts of the, uh, the TFAI with the cooperation of Mo Dun Fei's family, um, we are now able to get a, a fuller picture of uh, his career, which was a, a very interesting and uh, certainly a very unusual one. Um, uh, before I go, I'd like to thank our uh, co-presenters, the uh, Taiwan Academy in Houston, uh, Outreach for Taiwan, Asian Cinevision, uh, Taiwanese American Citizens League, and the Taiwanese American Film Festival. I would also like to thank the Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Film and Audiovisual Institute for not only helping us to present this film, but also providing um, some great assistance that allowed us to program some of the other films that you'll be seeing in this series. They, um, they really are uh, an invaluable resource for uh, anybody who is interested in Taiwanese cinema. Um, I do hope that after the film, you'll check out our interview with the head of the TFAI's digital restoration team. Um, you'll get some uh, very interesting background information about this film and its uh, preservation and uh, the TFAI's work uh, restoring and preserving Taiwanese cinema in general. So uh, thank you again for joining us and enjoy the end of the track. <laughs>